Hello guys, I'm Rav and welcome to a new video. Hey, Rav from the future here. Forgot to mention, before we start, here's a list of all the tools. Also, sorry about the audio. I tried to fix it, but next time it will be better, I promise. Good, now back to the video. A lot of people always ask me what are the tools you need to build or repair a PC. And the most common answer I usually see is just a medium-sized Philips subscriber. But do you really need only that? Yeah, most of the times the only required tool is that. But there are a lot of useful and cheap tools or materials that could save you hours of work and make your life considerably easier. The first thing I advise you to get, instead of only a big screwdriver, is a kit with some medium to small sized screwdriver bits. It's a lot more comfortable having just that kit around instead of a dozen different screwdrivers. There is no need to buy an expensive iFixit kit, a cheap wine will do, but don't get stuff that's too crappy. I've been using mine for 3 years and this is the bit I use more often and it's still in decent shape for what I paid. Also, don't put that big Philips set screwdriver away, keep it around. It's always convenient to have a heavier duty tool. Possibly get a kit with magnetized bits, but if you can find it, or if it's too expensive, you could always buy a small neodymium magnet and periodically passing the tip on the magnet. This will magnetize them pretty strongly and will function just as well. A magnetized tip won't guarantee that you're never going to lose screws, so I advise you also to get a magnetic pole or mat. This way, that strong and big magnet at the bottom will guarantee their safety. Buy multiple if you want, they become so useful after some weeks of using them. Also remember to keep your screws organized, otherwise that's, bit, that's a bit useless. If for some reason that's not good enough and the screws sometimes fall off and get stuck in tight spaces, be sure to have a pair of tweezers on hand. You hopefully won't use them much, but they will be a godsend when you actually have to use them. If you instead have a stuck screw that won't come out, a pair of pliers will come in handy. Instead of destroying the top of the screw with your screwdriver, grab it firmly by the sides and remove it this way. It will come out much easier since you have a lot more leverage than a standard screwdriver. When you start opening laptops, especially new ones, you'll soon find out that a lot of them interlock with plastic or metallic pieces. So you'll need something to divide them. I advise you to get a bunch of different thickness guitar plectrums from the music store or the internet. They are super incredibly cheap. If you're a guitar player, then they are basically free. If you want to go fancier, I mean fancier, then get one of those plastic praying tools. Next up, zip ties. Buy a few big bags of them, some smaller size, some bigger size. They are very, very cheap, they're just pieces of plastic at this point. You can buy several hundreds of them with just few euros. They are super useful for doing temporary or permanent cable management. On that note, there are some pitchy cases that are super terrible for doing cable management. Hey, watch out for that video, coming soon. And that's why I always have around a bunch of plastic wrapped metallic wires to get in uncomfortable holes or places where a more rigid zip ties can't. Also, buy some strap ties, they're very cheap and very useful for doing temporary cable management since you can reuse them multiple times before they wear out. Also, I have few paper clips on hand they're very practical to test if a PSU is dead or not. Thin metallic wire is often too thin to do this job. I'm sure some of you made at least one change of thermal paste, maybe bought a one two kilogram tube of thermal paste for a few applications. Well, if you intend on doing that more times, I'd advise you to get a big tube of a good quality one. Maybe an eight gram big syringe of uh, Arctic MX4 or another good quality paste, comes at around 10 euros. I bought mine last year, 8 kilograms. I used it 20 times at least, and it's just halfway through. You also need something to clean the thermal paste with when you're removing it. And for that, I advise you Q-tips for smaller jobs and cotton balls or tissues for bigger ones. Humify it with the nitrate alcohol. 
Q-tips are also useful to clean the sides and under parts of a foam blade. On the subject of cleaning, if you're going to clean a lot of very dirty PCs and components, invest in a small air compressor. You don't need to buy a 20 liter professional one, even a smaller one is fine. And please don't buy compressed air cans every time. I made that error, it's not fun. Yes, they're cheap, they're like 3 euros, 4 euros a can, but that cost stacks up. After 10 cans, the total cost will be 30 euros, plus a lot of waste and your hand freezing up every time you use that. Instead, if you need to do a quick cleaning for just one device, or, or you need it just for your PC, then buy compressed hair cans is okay. Another useful thing to have when dusting a PC is a mask. I'm sure you have a bunch of those laying around during this time period. Dust can really be annoying and breathing it isn't really very healthy, you know? A mask with a valve is better, but you can really just use a standard disposable mask. A basic tool you need to have is a medium big brush with not soft hair. They're really cheap, but indispensable for cleaning dust from PCBs and coolers. If you need to brush something, but you have to be gentle, such as a I don't know, laptop keyboard, I would consider buying a toothbrush. Perfect compromise between brushes with soft hair that are often too soft and brushes with non-soft hair that are often too hard. Last, if you intend swapping CPUs really frequently, just for some quick tests without stressing them, I also advise you to look into some thermal pads. The one I bought is graphite thermal pad from Innovation Cooling. They function in the same way as the thermal paste, passing it through them and to the cooler, but they don't leave any trays, so you don't have to clean anything when changing CPUs. You can even grab them, they don't leave a trace on skin too. They don't conduct heat as well, so they're not a substitute of classic thermal paste, but they work for quick tests, not based on uh, temperature. You obviously don't need all of them. Look into it, decide for yourself what's more useful to you. I think the plectrums, magnetic ball, zip ties, the brush, thermal paste and the natural alcohol are the must have or most useful one for me. For you it might be a different story though, your choice after all. Also remember that many of these tools can be found in kits, you probably don't need to buy them all separate. Well that'll be it for today, subscribe, leave a comment if you want, and thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.